Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Well, I was working on another video and this thing popped up. This is a Panasonic cassette recorder. A little bit dusty. But this will either be a show and tell or a repair video depending on if it works or not. So it's your uh, typical shoebox style, I guess they call it. Comes in a little case here. Let's remove the casing. There we go. Yeah, this thing looks like an uh, early 70s model. It's in pretty good shape. Let's see what we have here. Plug a speaker into it, remote and mic, AC input, volume control, condenser mic, usual piano style keys. Nothing on this side. Oh, well, there's a 6 volt jack. It's in really nice shape, except the part that's exposed must have been in its case for most of its life because the rest of the case is pretty clean uh, so we have an RQ-309S and the uh, labeling style and everything it seems like it's probably early 70s ooh that doesn't look too good does it battery leakage to see if I can clean that up but yeah see if I can wrangle up some batteries and tape and see if this thing works or not well I found these sunbeams 2019 so they're expired but oh well found this old tape Concert tape from Radio Shack. Post-war America. That's from a high school lecture. 1985, I think. Well, let me pop the batteries in and see what happens. see here test the functions real quick nothing happening here those contacts are really corroded Let's see if I can clean these a little bit because we're not getting any sort of action a little sandpaper action here are totally not corroded away but they are pretty rough Let's see what happens this time I probably should check these batteries but oh well I guess that fast forward does not stay locked down. Maybe it, I'm not sure if it's the way it is or there's something wrong with it or it's playing. It's 
playing, but there's no one home. I'm not even hearing a little pop sound. Usually you can hear a little thump or a pop sound when you apply power, but I'm not hearing anything. Let's see here. Let's get the little auto stop thing. Get some uh, tension on the take up reel, that's good. Auto stop works. We've got some tension. Rewind. Yeah, it's not real strong, but good enough, I guess. Yeah, nobody's home here. The good thing is the uh, mechanics seem to be good, but uh, there might be something electronic with it that needs to be looked at. So this explains why it feels so heavy. It's got a nice metal chassis, big flywheel. This handle must be made of zinc. It's got some mass to it. Look at the belt. Good tension. Not one of those melt away belts they're starting to use in the 80s or so. It's good quality all the way. Decent sized speaker. I wonder if it's AC bias or not. Probably is. It started getting cheap in the 80s with stuff. But one could argue that they had cheap models pretty much any time. But uh, construction quality definitely went down as time went on. Well, at any rate, I'm going to see if I can uh, find anything on this board before I actually have to start tearing into it. Well, I removed this shield here. This is where the preamps are. It was pretty dead, and I started moving this record play switch. And you can hear that. I crank the volume all the way up. It's working again. I have this uh, connector plugged in here. That keeps the motor off, so I'm not running the motor, just running the uh, electronics here, the amplifier. Well, let's see what happens then. Well, the plot thickens. I checked this tape to make sure it wasn't erased, and yeah, there is audio on it, but... I crank this thing up, it's uh, it's dead. It's like the uh, front end of this thing is dead. The preamp stage, maybe. Maybe uh, head's not connected or bad connection there. Could be that switch is not letting the signal through. So yeah, I'll probe further and see what's going on. Well, as it turns out, it was just the play record switch was a little crusty. So I exercised it a few times by pushing it. And, well, now it plays and records. No static or anything. I didn't even have to spray it. The next thing I did was to use Shango 066 audio capacitor check, where he puts an audio signal through the capacitors right on the board. You don't have to take them out or anything. And it's just kind of a quick go, no go test to see if the capacitors are bad. And all of the capacitors are good except one. And it happened to be 
this one in the plastic can. All the other ones are in the aluminum cans and those test fine. This measures fine, it just comes out kind of quiet. So it has a higher ESR. I don't know if it will it really affect the circuit or not, but I went ahead and changed that. So I have to clip the leads off. In the other video where I was testing the LED fixture, I was using that test putting an audio signal through and you know pretty much quickly found that capacitor sure if I was in the business of repairing things I'd get better equipment but just for stuff like this I'm not gonna run out and buy gear to test capacitors in circuit just a few things you have to do you want to keep the signal very low you don't want to put too much current and damage sensitive components you also don't want to forward bias transistor junctions. So keep the signal very low, like around 200 millivolts. You can hear that okay with the speaker. As it turns out, this is a positive ground circuit. It's using germanium transistors. So this tape recorder is pretty old. Here's what that capacitor sounds like. It measures pretty close, but it sounded quiet in the circuit, so it's kind of high ESR. So I'll plug it in here. So you can hear it's doing its capacitor thing. It's blocking the base. It's 2.2 microfarads. And here's the good one. I don't know how that comes across, but this sounds, this one sounds sharper, a little louder. And when I test this, I'm going to put it in here. ESR is 37 ohms. And uh, it's a little high, but, you know, it's not too far off. It's just the ESR is pretty high, so that's why it sounds a lot quieter. So yeah, you can pick those things out with that audio test technique. Here's the new one. Uh, 2.9 ohms and uh, 2 microfarads. Okay, got all back together and cleaned up. Cleaned up pretty nicely. Yeah, they're not kidding here when uh, they say to take the batteries out if you're going to store it for a while. So I cleaned up the battery holder as good as I could, the compartment. Well, I was uh, monkeying around with this thing. I couldn't get it to record with the crap. I think it's because the little pad in there fell off. So I got another tape. And... Uh, See what this sounds like. recorded that on the boom box I was repairing in a video from about a year ago but anyhow let's see how recording works find my external mic we'll start off on the built-in condenser mic to see if that's working Testing one, two, three, internal condenser microphone. Testing one, two, three. Now I'll plug in the dynamic external mic, which is this guy right here. Testing one, two, three. Hopefully this is working. Testing one, two, three. John Audio Tech Channel. And over in the chair is the Snickers.
Testing one, two, three. Internal condenser microphone. Testing one, two, three. And now I'll plug in the dynamic external mic. There's this guy right here. Testing one, two, three. Hopefully this is working. Testing one, two, three. John Audio Tech Channel. And over in the chair is the Snickers. Just like I bought one. Works pretty good. Has a lot of gain. This was kind of overdriving it. But yeah. Nice old Panasonic cassette recorder all restored. Just replaced this little capacitor here. I don't know if it would have made any difference. But yeah, it was bad. So go ahead and change it out. I guess that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Somebody got hungry. Somebody wants food again. What are we going to do? Huh? He led me back to this door. Behind that door is some cat food. So he knows where it's at when it's hungry time. Right, Snick?